Kaepernick. They're Mason people over there. That's what they're doing. Basically, what we're doing is protecting, protecting uh, the water. You know, the water protectors. That's what we're doing right here. And uh, all this you see right here is just uh, that that we need to stop it. You know, uh, we're basically on a uh, ace property, which is the Army Corps of Engineers land, and it shouldn't even be up there. So we have every right. This is sovereign nation right here. This is sovereign people's land right here. So. The Dakota Access Pipeline is an oil pipeline that is to run through four states, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Illinois. It was proposed in 2014 by Dakota Access, a part of Energy Transfer Partners. It is meant to carry approximately 450,000 barrels of crude oil per day. It is supposed to reach over 1,000 miles in length and cost approximately $3.8 billion. However, its path runs through Standing Rock, a Native American reservation. The Native Americans at Standing Rock are against the pipeline because it could potentially pollute the drinking water of 17 million people and go through their sacred burial places. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers did not consult with the tribe before building the pipeline. The Native Americans began nonviolent protests in August of 2016. Here, a protester is chaining himself to the pipeline equipment, forcing the workers to stop what they are doing. Protests are not only occurring on the sites of the pipeline's path, but enraged Americans are also protesting in largely populated areas, such as New York City, Los Angeles, and Atlanta. Hundreds of protesters have been arrested while in prayer. Though the protesters were all nonviolent, the police's reactions were anything but peaceful. Everyone in the crowd is coughing, spitting up due to the heavy amounts of tear gas they're firing into the crowd. <laughs>
but not only the, the leftover rounds, even the people, there are a big OC canisters as well. Me and my people. Stay away from the officer. Do not get out of the pickup. Stay at the pickup. Look at it, you know, look at this. It's there. Look at it. Man, your dog just bit this protester. Are you telling the dogs to bite the protester? The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. It's just still standing here fighting. You can't put your blood on the dog. You're an evil woman. You can't put your blood on the dog. This man was shot okay. directly okay. in the head. Right. I know it's going to be hard. Could have killed him. Back, Lucky it. to be alive. Right. Yep. I know. I know. Okay. Even right. if you do that. Throw! Oh, prayers, man. Prayers. You're a hero. Move your path. Move. Go ahead and ask for medic transport. Make a way. This man just got shot directly in the head. We need medical transport! Shot directly in the head with a rubber bullet. I saw him go down. He was shot in the side of the head by a rubber bullet. She's hypothermic. This is a human rights violation. I love you. The medic. So basically we have water cannons that are aimed towards our water protectors. So we're having severe cases of hypothermia. They are aiming for people's hands. Uh, I took one patient that had the skin shot off of his finger, so he was down to the bone. They're also aiming for the heads. There was another brother that uh, got shot in the head and was losing consciousness. So it's pretty deliberate and it's it's pretty violent. One I got shot in the head too, said this was run, uh, uh, dripping it into, it was the sweat was making it run down into my eyes. I had my glasses on and that spared me the brunt of it, but then the sweat started putting it in. How are you doing? I'm great. What's your name? Raina Crow. And what do you think you've accomplished today? I hope we've accomplished letting Enbridge know that the people of this nation and the people of this world, tribal or otherwise, have withdrawn their social license to pollute water and that they need to find an honest, nonviolent way to make a living. Where are you from? Duluth, Minnesota. I don't know where to move. I can us. And understand our struggles for the water for the benefit of everybody, we wouldn't be in this spot. That's all we're here is to protect the water and the sacred integrity of this land and our relationship to each other. We're not here for violence and they're responding with violence and cruelty. We're just here to defend the water. Previously, there was a media blackout of what was going on. No mainstream sources were reporting on Standing Rock. The movement started to get attention when Shailene Woodley, a famous actress, was arrested and imprisoned after a protest while live streaming to 40,000 people over Facebook. She was charged with criminal trespassing and engaging in a riot. So we all peacefully left and as I was pulling up, walking up to my RV in the back of the line of um, the protesters' cars, so there weren't a lot of people around, my mom was with me and a few friends. There was a there was a group of cops waiting for me, as well as a tank was a tank. I mean, a tank. I don't know. Like that's so crazy to say. There's a tank, um, a, a war tank, and then there was like a SWAT car tank, and uh, and they were waiting there, and they grabbed my arm and they asked if I was Shaylee Woodley, and I said yes, and they told me to wait, and um, eventually they decided to come back and and arrest me, um, and then we were strip searched and um you were charged with these low level misdemeanors and you were strip searched yeah we uh we were asked to we, we had to get undressed um in front of someone you were by yourself and by by ourselves with the guard uh yeah watching um and prove that we had nothing on or in our bodies um and then from there we were told to put on an orange jumpsuit also being watched um, and then sat in a holding chamber with a group of other women. When we pulled into the sheriff's department we was uh, caged in uh, dog kennels on the, on the, um, and sat on the floor 
and we're marked with numbers. So. You're in dog kennels, huh? No, yeah. Not cell. Yeah, we were in cells. We were in the garage, being held in the garage, and they had a had a dog kennels, and there was two for the women, and we had they had tarps up, so we couldn't see out. We could hear the buses coming. We could see like a, where I was sitting. I could see a crack, so I could see one of the buses pull up. And uh, despite all of the outcry against the pipeline, the company maintains its position that the pipeline is a safe, efficient idea. They believe that it will create 8,000 to 12,000 jobs and will save money. It will also be a more efficient way of transporting oils as opposed to having trains transport it. Energy Transfer Partners has said that any concerns about how the pipeline will affect drinking water are unfounded, but the CEO of Energy Transfer Partners admitted otherwise. Uh, you, will, you will have no concerns whatsoever. It's thick wall steel pipe. It's buried, let's say, at about four, four feet underground. Uh, absent uh, human error, and what I mean by that is absent someone digging into the pipeline, which does occur, even though there's signs that will be everywhere to say before digging please call this number people still do those kind of things from time to time and, and so most lakes are caused by human error so that's number one but our pipeline is very very safe well, that's good news other supporters believe that the pipeline is not a discrimination issue however this is not the case the oil pipeline is, is super safe people need to stop stressing out like it's safe it's one of the safest ways you can transport oil stop stressing out all right the only question i have is uh, if it's super, super, super safe, then how do you explain this? The pipeline's original path crossed the Missouri River just north of Bismarck, a city that is 90% white. But when concerns were raised about a potential oil spill there, the pipeline was rerouted south to go under the river right next to the Standing Rock Reservation. The governor of North Dakota threatened to have all the protesters evicted from Standing Rock on December 5th. Fortunately, on December 4th, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers denied a permit for energy transfer partners to drill underneath the Missouri River and will do an environmental impact study. The pipeline could be rerouted, but energy transfer partners believes that the decision is purely political and stated, ETP and SXL are fully committed to ensuring that this vital project is brought to completion and fully expect to complete construction of the pipeline without any additional rerouting in and around Lake Oahe. Nothing this administration has done today changes that in any way. While the Native Americans at Standing Rock and their allies have achieved an important victory, the movement is far from over. President-elect Trump supports the pipeline. He aligns himself with the industry, not the people it is affecting. Trump's presidency could dismantle everything the Native Americans have fought for. The pipeline is now precariously teetering on the verge of being put into effect. Wherever you may be to stand up and make your voice heard, the people that are representing you, that are representing, especially like states like Wyoming, and I can't even remember all the states that had police forces there on the ground, they were, they're not home guarding your communities. They're here protecting this oil company. They're, they could be on your streets and protecting your people from people that are actually criminals, but they're here on the ground and they're, they're protecting this, this interest of this pipeline that's gonna decimate our futures. I, I wish they'd open their eyes and have a heart to realize, you know, if this happens, we're not gonna be the only ones who's gonna suffer, they're gonna suffer too. America has spent centuries moving native peoples from place to place. Maybe just this one time, you can be the ones who move. These different tribes and non-native allies are coming together to heal the past and to move forward in solidarity for future generations. And, and that's really major. This is a historical moment. This will be in history books. Things are changing, and it's because people are letting go of a lot of pain and a lot of um, suffering that has existed for so many years. And we cannot, it is our civic and civil responsibility 
especially me as a non-native, to recognize what my ancestors did to Native Americans in this country and what I refuse to let continue to happen to Native Americans in this country. I'm criminals, you know, they're not uh, violent people, they're not rapists, they're not murderers, they're not, they're not um, abusers, they're uh, good people, good strong people of our community. The issues are very clear. For hundreds of years, the Native American people in our country, the first Americans, have been lied to, have been cheated, and their sovereign rights have been denied them. And today we are saying it is time for a new approach to the Native American people not to run a pipeline through their land. What we have got to tell Mr. Trump and everybody else, we are not going silently into the night. The stakes are too high for the future of this planet. We are going to be smart. We're going to educate. We're going to organize. We're going to bring tens of millions of people, moms and dads and their kids. Together, together to tell the fossil fuel industry that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of our planet. He said, let's not make this just a dream. And right now it kind of feels like it was a dream. Because he said you had our back and here we are. Help us stop this pipeline. Stick true to your words. Because you said you had our back. I believed in you then, and I still believe in you now that you, you can make this happen.